Your Voice, Shropshire Disability Network Newsletter, issue number 7, December 2010. This is the Care Matters section of the newsletter. Care Quiz. The BBC's Radio 4 programme, You and Yours, are running a cost of care quiz at the moment and the results will be passed on to the London School of Economics for their research. If you're willing to take part, you can go to the following website, www.bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 4 forward slash features forward slash you dash and dash yours forward slash care. Home Care Inquiry The Equality and Human Rights Commission is now looking at how the human rights of older people, people over 65, are respected in home care. We need to gather the views of older people, their family and their friends about their experience of home care services. We also want to include the views of current and past home carers, personal assistants and the views of people and organisations who have knowledge and expertise in this area in this inquiry. There are three questionnaires aimed at older people and all their family, friends and associates, home care staff and organisations. Full details can be found on the Commission's website which is www equalityhumanrights.com forward slash legal dash and dash policy forward slash formal dash inquiries forward slash inquiry dash into dash older dash people dash in dash home care dash and dash human dash rights forward slash call dash for dash evidence and you can reply by the 4th of February 2011 by post, email or telephone. The telephone number is 0845 604 6610 and the text phone number is 0845 604 6620 or you can also contact them by fax. This article is entitled Social Care, Everyone's Responsibility. This is by Nick Triggle, the health reporter for BBC News. The website is www.bbc.co.uk forward slash news forward slash health dash 11761090. Social care should no longer be seen as a right from the state, but instead everyone's responsibility, the government says. The attempt to change the perception of the sector was made as ministers set out new plans for England. To achieve this, they promised more support for carers, an increase in personal budgets and a greater role for the voluntary sector. It comes as an independent commission is looking at social care funding. Councils are increasingly struggling to provide services such as home health and care home placements because of growing demands. But whatever conclusions are reached next year, councils are still bracing themselves for making funds stretch further and further in the future. The policy paper unveiled by the government on Tuesday effectively paves the way for this by attempting to change the image of social care. Richard Jones, the president of the Association of Directors of Adult Social Services, said the sector was facing a significant funding challenge. It's about a shift in perception and helping people understand that there is a partnership between the individual, families and the state. In the public mindset, people still think you get it free. The plans set out include an extra £400 million over four years for providing more breaks for carers and £3 million for next year to help invigorate the voluntary sector. The government cited projects such as befriending schemes to help tackle social isolation and handyman services for preventing fractures from falls when elderly people try to do DIY as a way of community-based schemes could help. It also set councils a target of achieving full rollout of personal care budgets by 2013. Just over a tenth of those eligible currently have the budgets which allow individuals to decide how their state allocation is spent. 
Personal budgets are seen as a prime lever in which to promote greater involvement as they establish a clear agreement about what the state can do to help. Care Services Minister Paul Burstow admitted people needed to be more aware of the realities of social care. But he added, social care is everyone's responsibility, it's not about getting care on the cheap. The social care burden in England this year stands at 16.6 billion, the equivalent of about half of the spending by councils. Just over 2 billion of the sum comes from personal contributions as social care is mean tested, which means everyone with assets of below 23,500 pay some or all of their costs. In October's spending review, ministers said social care would get an extra 2 billion by 2014. The NHS will contribute one billion of this and the rest will come in the form of a grant from central government. But with the overall local government pot falling by a quarter, councils and campaigners fear it will prove impossible to fully protect social care budgets. This article is entitled Young Carers Deserve More Help. It's been written by Dave Howard for the BBC News and can be found at the following website www bbc.co.uk forward slash news forward slash education dash 11757907 and also on www.bbc.co.uk forward slash news forward slash education dash 11744836 there are four times more young carers in the UK than are officially recognised, figures published by the BBC suggest. One in 12 of the 4,029 school children asked by the BBC said that they had caring responsibilities such as dressing, washing or bathing family members. If the survey reflects the UK as a whole, it would mean that there are about 700,000 young carers in the UK 2001 census, though, identified only 175,000 young carers. Responding to the survey, Care Services Minister Paul Burstow said the research rightly highlights the numbers of hidden young carers, some of whom were shouldering intolerable burdens. He said the government would make £4 million available for carers' breaks over the next four years. Earlier, the Children's Minister for England, Sarah Tether, said it was shocking that child carers did not get the support they needed or the recognition they deserved. This includes activities such as helping the person they care for to dress, wash, bathe or shower. Professor Saul Becker, head of the School of Sociology and Social Policy at the University of Nottingham, said the survey pointed to a hidden army of UK young carers. The figures were a wake-up call to the governments and carers' organisations, he said. Professor Becker said the figures showed the real underbelly, if you like, of what young carers in the UK are having to do. Very difficult, very personal, very intimate, very draining care, giving tasks and responsibilities which, in many circumstances, deprives them of their childhood. Separately, 29% of school pupils who took part in the survey said they had carried out emotional care of someone in their home, either a lot of the time or some of the time, over the preceding month. This could include sitting with the person they care for, reading to them, or taking them out for a walk. While these would not necessarily be considered young carers, it is likely that many of them are providing support for family members with mental illnesses or addictions to drugs or alcohol. Sonia Flint from Derbyshire and Derby City Young Carers Action for Children said there was a hidden group of young carers in the latter group whose situation had had impact on their lives. They may worry that dad might hurt themselves again or worry mum might fall over and it's a kind of constant worry throughout the day, she said. Campaigners and charity groups have been arguing for years that the official 175,000 figure is a vast underestimate. The National Young Carers Coalition, a group of charities including the Princess Royal Trust for Carers, Bernardo's and the Children's Society, said the figures came as no surprise. The organisation points out that the census figures asked parents, rather than children, to complete questionnaires and made no mention of more stigmatised conditions such as mental health, substance misuse or HIV AIDS. 
Whilst the new figures from the BBC give us a more realistic picture of the scale of the problem, we still believe that there are many more than 700,000 children and young people providing care to parents or family members who are unrecognised and without support across the UK, the group said. The four UK children's commissioners, one each for England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, said in a joint statement that young carers were often caught in the middle of a well-meaning muddle. It said they could miss out on vital support and called on governments at Westminster and the nations to properly identify and meet the needs of young carers so that this largely invisible and often vulnerable group can get the support they need. Maggie Atkinson, the Children's Commissioner for England, told the BBC child carers save the state millions and many of them lose their childhoods. She said child carers who are having difficulty getting help should try to raise problems with their GPs or school staff. Mr Burstow said schools and GPs should help to identify young carers who required more support. Shadow Education Secretary Andy Burnham said it was absolutely crucial that young carers were identified and supported. He warned that ill-thought-through reforms in health and education could result in disjointed and fragmented local services. Other campaigners are worried young carers' services are being cut by councils and other bodies trying to rein in the country's debt after the recession. The National Young Carers Coalition says there should be no cuts for services that support young carers so that they are not forced into caring roles that are inappropriate and damaging to their health and well-being.